Hello and welcome to this comprehensive tutorial. Today, I'm excited to share with you a remarkably easy yet effective way to create molds for various objects, focusing particularly on clocks. However, the beauty of this technique lies in its versatility, as it can be adapted for a myriad of projects involving epoxy resin, such as crafting a stunning coffee table, an elegant serving tray, and much more. Let's dive right into the initial steps. First and foremost, you'll require a base, for which a piece of board is essential. Whether it's chipboard or plywood, the choice is yours. The crucial aspect here is that the board should be just a bit larger than the object you're planning to create. This ensures enough working space around the edges. Moreover, it's vital that the board is perfectly even to guarantee the uniformity of your mold. Moving on to the next set of materials, paper and transparent tape. While I tend to use colored paper in my work, this is purely a personal preference. You can opt for any kind of paper, as long as it provides a smooth and even base for your object. Now, let me introduce a special tool I've crafted, which is instrumental in this process. This tool is a simple but ingenious device made from a microfiber cloth attached to a piece of plywood. It's designed to assist in applying the tape more efficiently. You might be wondering why not just use hands? The reason is that manual application often leads to uneven tape placement and the dreaded air bubbles. These bubbles can cause a lot of extra work during the resin pouring and leveling process. Thus, using this tool ensures a smooth, bubble-free application of the tape, which is critical for a flawless mold. Once you've prepared the base using this technique, you'll notice how it serves as an excellent foundation for any project you have in mind. The process might seem meticulous, but it's the attention to detail that makes all the difference in the end result. Now, let's focus on the actual application technique. Observe closely as I demonstrate. The key is to ensure that the tape strips slightly overlap, leaving no gaps. This overlap is what guarantees a seamless and thorough coverage of the base. If done correctly, you'll end up with an ideal surface for mold making, free from any imperfections. Next, we move on to creating the actual mold. For this, I use a specific type of transparent plastic foil, about 1 mm thick. I usually purchase this foil from a local building materials store, where it's sold by the meter. This allows me to get just the right amount I need for my project. I cut this foil into strips approximately 2 cm wide, which aligns with the maximum thickness of the clocks I generally produce. Despite the simplicity of this method, the precision and care involved make it incredibly effective. You might be surprised to know that even if you proceed slowly and methodically, it will only take about 10 minutes to prepare the base. The end result is a base so well prepared that the resin will not stick to it, and you'll find it easy to remove your creation from the mold once it's set. When dealing with the plastic foil, especially since it is rolled, a bit of preparation is required to make it easy to work with. I usually straighten it out by placing weights on both ends and then attaching guides to facilitate easy and accurate cutting. While there might be other ways to achieve this, I find this method to be the most convenient and efficient. It's important to note that the thickness of the plastic film requires careful handling. Since it's about 1 mm thick, it might require multiple passes with a knife to cut through effectively. There are thinner films available in the market, but in my experience, they do not lay as well when creating molds. For the actual mold forming, you need to have an item or template to guide you in cutting the plastic foil. You can use either scissors or a knife for cutting. I personally prefer using a knife along with a cutting tool for a more precise and even edge. This precision is crucial for the next step, which is joining the cut pieces.
The joining process involves the same tape used for the base. This step requires patience and a steady hand to ensure an even and secure bond. Remember, rushing through this step might compromise the integrity of your mold. After joining the pieces, we move on to securing our mold shape with hot glue. It's crucial at this stage not to overapply the glue, a light yet firm application is sufficient to hold the form together. Once the glue has cooled and the mold is set, we gently remove the template. The final touch, to ensure a completely leak-proof mold, is the application of a layer of silicone. For demonstration purposes, I'm using black silicone in this tutorial. However, the color of the silicone is not critical to its function. You may choose any color that suits your project. In my regular practice, I often use transparent silicone, as it tends to. As you can see, this method, though simple, is incredibly efficient for creating molds. It's accessible and manageable for everyone, regardless of their experience level in craft or mold making. The technique I've shared today is not just about following steps, it's about understanding the nuances of working with materials like epoxy resin and ensuring a flawless end result. If you found this tutorial helpful and informative, please do show your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Your engagement not only motivates me to create more such content but also helps in sharing these techniques with a wider audience who could benefit from them. I'm always excited to share my knowledge and experience, and I hope this tutorial has given you the confidence to try out this method yourself. Remember, creativity is all about experimentation and learning so don't hesitate to give it a go. Stay tuned for more videos where I'll be exploring other interesting projects and techniques. Until then, happy crafting and see you in the next video.